Something else that came up comes up quite often in cross-cultural communication, which is also relevant to, to Toastmasters, is the use of silence. Now, something we talk about often in Toastmasters meetings and uh, in terms of how to make your speech effective is to learn how to make less of those filler noises like um and ah and you know and so on, and instead learn, to learn the power of the pregnant pause. So pausing dramatically, leaving your audience room to react emotionally to what you're speaking about and so on. And the fact of the matter is, it's not that obvious to people who have been mostly in an English speaking Toastmasters club, but people who, who are in different societies also have different levels of tolerance for silence. And the thing about native English speakers, one of the reasons why pauses are so powerful in an English speaking in an English speech is because English speakers are generally fairly intolerant of silence. We usually find a pause of more than about two or three seconds becomes what we call an uncomfortable silence. So let me just show you, I'll give, I'll pause for six seconds and I'll show you just how uncomfortable that feels for a native English speaker. Okay, starting now. Now that's only five seconds, but you can see how people are starting to sort of feel a bit uncomfortable already. And that's why in English we have all these idioms like it was a pregnant pause, there was a pregnant pause, there was an awkward moment. It's because for native English speakers, silence is intrinsically awkward. But one of the things I discovered, especially when I was uh, staying in China, I studied in China for six months, I had a lot of Japanese friends. I didn't realise it at the time, but the reason why my Japanese friends would be frustratingly slow to respond is because in Japan, it's quite normal to have a silence of, you know, even even 10 seconds in conversation. So when I dated a Japanese guy for a while, I'd be sitting there asking him something, he'd be, eh, to. I'd be sitting there waiting, you know, oh, hurry up, hurry up, go on. And it wasn't until later when I was studying cross-cultural communication that I understood that his frustrating slowness to respond to me was partly because I, as a native English speaker, wanted a quick response, two or three seconds answer, whereas he felt it was quite appropriate and even respectful to meditate carefully on his answer for you know, seven or eight seconds, which for a native English speaker is almost is heading towards pausing for a minute to honour the dead. It's something we really find difficult to deal with. So he would he would be pausing and then finally he'd come back to his answer. So one of the things that we may find, especially when we're in an international competition, perhaps on the international stage, is that people from different language groups may actually have differences in the way they use silence and have differences in the way they organise information. 